Hi there, I'm Sarah from Great Days by Sarah, and today I have for us a grounding yoga practice. So we're really gonna focus on what are the points in our body that are connected to our yoga mat, and then consequently, how does the rest of our body feel? So let's get started at the top of our mat. Feet will start hip distance apart. Hands can start on your hips, and let's just focus on your feet. Spread all 10 toes nice and wide. Spread them on the mat. And then actively feel the bottom of your feet from your big toe, baby toe, and your heels even out the weight. In order to do so, maybe shift side to side or front to back, and then find what appears to be center for you. You'll be hearing me using the term through this practice, root to rise. So as we press down, everything else comes up, not just on our hands, but on our feet too. You'll see as it comes. Let's inhale our arms up, tall to the sky. Rise without lifting your shoulders. And then flat back, fold forward. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Inhale, halfway lift. Knees can still stay bent. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Press down through your feet, all four corners. Rise your body up. Hands come to heart center. Eyes can close if you're one to set an intention. Now's a great time to do so. My intention for today is to just be here in this practice, focusing on those connection points on the yoga mat. Let's flow. Inhale brings you up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. First one, exhale, fold. Step gently back into a plank, hold for two full breaths, focusing on pressing through all 10 fingers, and then press back for your first downward facing dog of the day, this upside down letter B with your body. Find the perfect spot in your stance, maybe pedal your feet. I love to shift my hips side to side and then make your way into stillness and we'll notice how our base has changed. If your heels don't touch the mat, no worries. Just divide the weight between your big toe all the way to your pinky. And then look at your hands and press down through your thumbs, down through your pointer finger, down through your middle finger, and your ring finger, and the pinky side, pressing down. Inhale out into plank, notice where the weight shift is, root to rise, lift yourself a little higher, and then send your hips back. You need two more like that. So inhale, forward to plank, press to your hands, really lift up out of your shoulders, and press back. One more, inhale brings you forward, root to rise through your upper body, and send it back. Tiptoe your feet up to the top. We do it a little differently today. We're gonna crisscross and step, crisscross and step, feeling it a little bit differently in your hips than you might usually. Finding your way into this forward fold this rag doll, maybe spread out your feet a little bit. Maybe you grab for opposite elbows. And if it feels good, shift side to side, but notice where your weight is distributed in your feet. Let your head hang heavy and find some release through your lower back. And then we'll find stillness and roll up one vertebrae at a time. Roll your shoulders up, back, and down. If it feels good, heel toe your feet together. For our next flow, inhale up, exhale fold. Inhale halfway up, exhale fold, hop, step, or jump back to plank, this time we're gonna add in our chaturanga. I'll show you the modification first. Our knees drop, 
hip strap, we lower all the way down to the mat, come up for a little baby cobra, then we can press through child's pose just for a beat and back to downward facing dog. We'll break those apart in just a moment. Inhale forward to plank, your version, chaturanga, knees or no knees, elbows just go to 90. Inhale forward, cobra or upward facing dog, exhale back, downward facing dog. Find that base. Make sure all your weight is not in the palm of your hands. It's spread out through your fingers. And then once again, we'll meet at the top of the mat. I liked the crisscross that first time. I'm going to do it again. But do what feels good for you. And we'll find that rag down one more time. My feet are wide, almost as wide as my mat. Maybe shake your head yes, shake your head no. If you liked interlacing your arms and swaying side to side, take advantage of it. This will be the last time we're here. Find stillness and slowly roll it up. Let's add on. Heel toe your feet together or closer. And we inhale as tall as you can. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, take it through your flow, whatever that means for you today. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog, press through all 10 fingers and send it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Now notice how the weight shifts. Notice that right foot and where is your weight? Is it on the inside and your instep? Is it on the pinky side or are you still balanced? That lifted leg is straight. The base leg is working and we step the left leg through. Coming up to a crescent lunge. So plant your left foot, come up on your toe on the back of your leg so it's not warrior one. Use your hands, whatever you need to, to come on up. Find your crescent lunge, hips, Facing forward, back knee can absolutely bend. Arms come up, and then maybe the back leg straightens. Now our base is different, but our focus has not changed. More weight is in your front leg. Make sure your toes are spread, and make sure your foot is pointing directly straight forward. Our hands will come down to your thigh or the mat, going into pyramid. Turn your heel down, maybe shorten your stance a little bit. And then with a flat back, lean forward. If you have blocks, this is a great time to have blocks. Pulling your left hip back, your right hip forward. Now notice the back leg for that root. Where is your weight? Where is the wobble? Back to crescent, so turn your toe under. I like to start with that knee bend in the back so my hips can face forward. Then I find the lowest point, my arms come up, and then I straighten my back leg. You should be feeling it through that front thigh. Maybe you can get a little lower. Pyramid one more time. Turn your heel down, maybe scoot it in a little bit. Pull your left hip back, right hip forward. Hands can come down to the thigh, down to your shin, or down to your mat. Of course, blocks or anything you can lean on, even better. But really focus on your hips and this front foot pointing straight forward. Bring it back up. Circle your arms back, around, and down. Take it through your flow. 
or just feet us back in downward facing dog. You know what's coming, we have two sides. Lift your right leg up, straight and strong. Ground down strongly through your left foot. Maybe your knee needs to bend, maybe it can be straight. Notice the weight in your hands. All 10 fingers should be pressing. And step it through. We're finding that crescent. So bring your leg forward, make sure this foot is straight ahead. On the ball of your back foot, walk it up slow as long as you need to. Maybe bend through your back leg, square off those hips. Arms can come up when you're ready and then straighten as much as you can through your back leg. So strong. This one's a little different because we're trying to go low, but we're trying to reach high. So focus on this long side body. Breathe. Turn that back heel down. Maybe step it in a tiny bit. Square off those hips and with a nice flat back, tilt it forward. It works for me on both sides. With my hands on my thighs, I feel like I can really focus on my hips rather than just collapsing into it. Going back into that crescent one more time. Deep bend, maybe you need to widen your stance a tiny bit. Square those hips and lift. This time, focus on your arms. Reach those fingertips, spread them apart. Sink low, but reach high. Last time here, turn your heel down, square your hips, fold it forward. Maybe go a little bit deeper. slow, arms come up, arms go back, open up your chest, reach it down and flow. On your chaturanga, notice your feet as you move into up dog. Are all 10 toes pressing down? Send it back, downward facing dog. here and then plant your knees down big toes touch send it back child's pose reach your arms forward your forehead rest rest on the mat or stack your hands if it doesn't quite get there on its own we just bring the floor to you facing dog and then listen for the big change step one foot up doesn't matter which one turn it to the center and all ten toes are going to be facing the same direction then we're going to slowly move your heels out toes in press your hands down and breathe only here for a minute then we'll fold, walk our hands all the way back, flip your palms if it feels right, and reach behind you. Now notice where your weight shifted. Did your weight shift into your heels? Let's balance it out. Press through your big toe mounds, press through your heels, and then try to drag your feet towards each other. They won't actually go there unless you have some levitation powers that I'm unaware of. But as you start to try to fold your mat in half, 
you'll feel this awesome activation of your inner thighs and your calves. So as we reach behind us and pull our feet towards each other, it activates a part of our body that's hard to activate kind of day to day. Walk your hands back up to the center. Bend through your right knee, turn your foot out. We're going into Skandasana. Coming over to the side, my left foot points towards the ceiling. My right straight ahead or at an angle. And then if you're comfortable, bring your hands to heart center. It's a little bit of balance. If not, keep your hands right on the floor. We're more going for the stretch than anything. We want our toe facing the ceiling, our knee facing the ceiling. And then can you get a little taller through your spine? Using your hands as much as little or you, as you can, we'll go over to the other side. Walk it through, walk it up, walk it over. Skandasana, other side, focusing on this base, sinking your heel to the mat, and then bringing your hands to heart center. This one is definitely harder for me. My heel's up in the air, and that's okay. If you have something to put under it, it can definitely help. I don't have anything at arm's reach today, so I'm just gonna stay up on my toe. But I'll focus on my opposite foot towards the ceiling, knee towards the ceiling, and stretching through this inner thigh. Maybe try to sit on your heel. Maybe you fall out of it, that's okay. Hands to heart center. And then shine your heart forward and breathe. Slowly come out. We'll go back to center one more time with the option to open your shoulders. So all 10 toes facing forward or turned in slightly. Hands can come up on the small of your back and fold forward or interlace, pressing palms together and show me that shoulder opener over the top. Now just because we've added the shoulders doesn't mean we sink back at our heels. Still press forward into your toes. Still try to squeeze your legs towards each other trying to bunch up that yoga mat and activate through your inner thighs. Last big breath. Hands release if you had them. Come on down and join me on your mat. We're gonna lay back and find ourselves into a bridge pose. So we plant our feet down, both toes facing the same direction. Then we reach our hands towards our heels and they should be able to graze them or almost graze them, depending on your body. This first one, we're just gonna lift up halfway. I'm gonna press through all four corners of your feet like we've been working on and press up into this tiny little bridge. Nothing high, just a little one and lower it back down. We're gonna go five more, getting higher every time. So press through all four corners and lift a little higher. Keeping your legs in the shape of this 11. Here comes three. Eyes should be towards the ceiling, not towards your legs. This one's a little bit higher. And on this last one, find your highest point of this expression. If you're one to interlace your hands and roll your shoulders underneath, you're more than welcome to do that. I really like robot arms these days. It really activates my triceps. And then imagine your chest is chasing your chin and your chin's running away a little bit. So our eyes are towards the ceiling. Can we lift up a tiny bit more? without your knees splaying to the side. Come down a little if they did. We're gonna hold for five, four, three, two, 
and one. Ground it down. Spread out your feet. Maybe windshield wiper your knees. And then the next time your knees come towards the right, let them drop for a spinal twist. If you want a little bit more, take your right leg, your right foot, put it across your left leg and feel that stretch. Feel that pull. Let me slide so you can see it a little easier. So the stacking is optional. Maybe you can even add a glance over to the left side. And then slowly come up. Once again, we'll windshield wiper actively. And then the next time you come to the left, let them be, let them fall. Maybe it's you stay here in this twist, or if you want a little bit more, take your left foot and put it on your right thigh and feel that deeper stretch. Maybe even look to the right. baby last time to ground down reach for your big toes or the outside of your feet press your heels towards the ceiling and then our ground down looks a little bit different our root looks a little different now we're focusing on our spine so can you press your tailbone towards the earth your lower back grounds down as you press your feet towards the ceiling and pull your legs towards the earth. Come out of it as slowly as we came in. Extend your body nice and long. Take one more big inhale together. Exhale, let it go. Backs of palms, or backs of hands, press into the mat. Your wrists, your elbows, your triceps, your shoulders. Ground down ever so gently. Shavasana. Start to circle your feet one at a time. Lots of emphasis on them today. Point and flex, wiggle them out. Do the same with your wrists. And then in one huge stretch, a good morning stretch, small your back can definitely come off the mat. And then roll onto your favorite side. Keep your eyes closed if it's comfortable. And then slowly press up for one last grounding breath. Feel your sits bones into the ground, the outside of your ankles into the ground. We do one last inhale, arms come up, out to the side, meet at the top, come down to heart center, and then thumbs come to your third eye, the space of intuition right between your eyebrows. We all say, namaste. Thank you for joining me in that grounding practice today. I like to come back to this one when my mind is frantic or our schedules are super busy. It makes me come back, connect with the earth, and it always brings me joy and peace at the end of it all. Go have a great day.